Okay, so I'm just going to sort of continue the first part of Jeremy's talk uh, in the context of relativity theory. So uh, <clears throat> Jeremy made this uh, nice point that the way philosophers now like to talk about things like prediction is in terms of senses in which you have uh, some sort of determinism or senses in which uh, some amount of uh, uh, data about one state of the universe might determine things about other states of the universe. And there's a sense, so we've just seen a sense in which uh, Newtonian gravitation is um, not deterministic in the way that, that we've often taken it to be. Of course, there are senses in which it is deterministic, and there are many caveats that are often quite natural to add, things like conservation of mass that uh, can, can force uh, a Newtonian system to, to be deterministic. Even so, in relativity theory, we're somewhat better off with regard to determinism. Um, so in particular, we have a notion of a domain of dependence. Basically, the idea is you can't have uh, signals propagating faster than, than the speed of light and some bound. And so this means that um, there's a sense in which you can take a, an achronal slice. So this is a, a collection of, uh, I shouldn't say slice, an achronal set, a collection of points that are not related by any time-like curve. Um, you can uh, then consider the collection of points that are related to those points by time-like curves. And so here's, here's a kind of picture of this. Okay, so S is some slice. Uh, what I call D plus S here is called the domain of dependence, and specifically the future domain of dependence of S. So these are the points that, in some sense, you can't get to by a time-like curve, except by passing through S. And now the relevant fact is that in, in many cases, if you give me a system of hyperbolic partial differential equations, say Einstein-Maxwell equations, it's going to be the case that if you give me some values for those fields on S, right, and you can think of this as sort of a, a slice of, of space or a little region of space, that the values of the fields that are governed by those equations uh, are going to admit at most one extension to uh, the whole domain of dependence. And so this is a sense in which whatever you give me on S determines everything that's going to happen on D of S. And so we get a kind of determinism, uh, many caveats holding here, but you get a kind of determinism in relativity theory that you don't really get in Newtonian gravitation. Okay, but now here's a natural question. Does that kind of determinism in relativity theory give us the sense of prediction that we might have wanted? In Newtonian gravitation, you think if you did have that kind of determinism, you would be able to predict things. Can we predict things in relativity theory even given this situation? And the answer is not really. Okay, so suppose I'm someone who's trying to make a prediction. I'm an observer. I'm going to be represented by some world line here. So I'm trying to make a prediction at Q about an event that's going to happen at P. So using the, the facts that I just cited, how would I go about doing that? Well, what I would need to do, ooh, what I would need to do is know all of the stuff on some achronal slice uh, such that P is in the domain of dependence of that achronal slice. Now, can I do that for a point that isn't, in fact, behind me in, in my past? And the answer is no. Uh, so. Um, well, sort of. The answer is sort of no. Um, <laughs> uh, the, the, it's, the, the, maybe at this point I should just say, look, let's, let's uh, uh, just observe that this is more difficult to do than you might have imagined, right? So it's um, obviously if a point is in my, my causal path, if it's behind me here in this region, uh, then I do have some slice even before that such that the point I'm trying to make the prediction about uh, is in the domain of dependence of that, that uh, achronal set. Um, but of course, I don't really care about making predictions about things in my causal past. I care about making predictions, uh, ideally, about things in my causal future. Right? I'd like to know, for instance, if it's going to rain uh, on me sometime in the future. I don't care if it rained yesterday with regard to prediction. I don't care if it's going to rain right now in San Juan if I can't get to San Juan in, in time to, to confirm that, that observation. Okay, so uh, what I really care about are things in my future. And so, okay, so how does this work? We can define a domain of prediction, sort of like the domain of dependence, 
for a point, in the domain of prediction for a point Q, that's where I'm making my prediction, um, is going to contain the points which are not in my causal past, so it's not retrodictions, and which are such that there exists some uh, achronal surface S in the causal past of me, such that the point that I'm trying to make the prediction about is within the domain of dependence of that set. And here's an example. I mean, so you can come up with examples in which you can make predictions, but they're pretty, pretty funny looking. And in natural cases, you can't make predictions. So for instance, in Minkowski space-time, you can't ever make predictions in this sense. Any point that's within, uh, well, there are no points that are, are within your domain of prediction at any point. OK, and now let's, you know, so as I say, there are some fairly strange cases where you can make predictions. Let me just make a remark about what kinds of strange cases those are. So let's, let's focus just on the, the cases where I can make predictions that I can go and directly verify. So I'm going to make, try to make a prediction about a point that's in my time-like future, so I can actually go over and look to see if my prediction is true. Um, so these are going to be points that are not only in my domain of prediction, but are also in my temporal future. Um, and one can prove that uh, if you have a space-time in which you have a domain of prediction, such that your domain of prediction at any point, at a given point is, um, uh, has non-empty intersection with your temporal future, then that space-time has to admit a compact space-like slice. And so when I say slice here, I really mean something that, that cuts across all of space-time. So this is going to be an acronal set without edge. Um, and you know, so if the universe is like a tube or something like that, I can make predictions. But just remember what that means. So recalling, for instance, the uh, uh, Hawking-Penrose singularity theorems, if you have a space-time that has a, a compact uh, achronal slice and it satisfies some pretty natural conditions, the strong energy condition and the, the Hawking-Penrose generic condition, which of course people can argue with, but uh, they're often considered reasonable conditions, then it follows that the space-time either has a singularity or has closed time-like curves. And so um, the situation is one in which there are some strange cases in which you can make predictions in relativity theory, but they've got pretty pathological features. And so you, you can't ever make predictions, in a sense, in the, the nice-looking space-times. Okay. Thanks, Thanks very much, James.